humbug. You don't mean that, Uncle, I'm sure. I certainly do. It gives you the right to be merry, poor as you are. What gives you the right to be miserable, rich as you are? Ah! Don't be cross, Uncle. Who else can I be in such a world of fools? Merry Christmas, indeed. What's Christmas of the likes of you but a time for counting yourself a year older and not a penny richer? If I had my way, every idiot who goes about with Merry Christmas on his lips would be boiled with his own pudding and buried with a steak and hurry through his heart. <coughs> Uncle! Let you! Keep Christmas in your own way and let me keep it in mine. But you don't keep it, that's the whole point. Let me leave it alone then. Much good it will do you, much good it has ever done you. I, I make no money from it. It's true, but... Is, is that what Christmas is about? Christmas it should be a time where you think of friends and, and family, people you love. Christmas it, it should be a pleasant time, a time for making merry, a time, a time for thinking of others, others, rich or poor. And, and, and therefore, Uncle, I believe Christmas has done me good and will do me good, so I say God bless it. One more sign from you and you'll keep Christmas by losing your situation. Powerful speech, sir. I wonder why I don't go into Parliament. Don't be cross, Uncle. Come dine with us tomorrow. I'd sooner dine with rats in the gutter. But why? What have I done to make you so bitter? What have you done indeed? Why did you get married? Because I fell in love. Because you fell in love? I've never heard anything so ridiculous in all my life. Good afternoon to you. But you didn't come and visit me before I got married. You can hardly use that as a reason to not come and visit me now. Good afternoon. I want nothing from you. I ask nothing of you. But why can't we be friends? Good afternoon. It breaks my heart to find you like this, Uncle. And if I've ever done anything or said anything to offend you, then, then I apologise. But it's Christmas Eve, and I've come here with the spirit of goodwill, and shall keep that to the last. So I say Merry Christmas to you, Uncle. Ah. <coughs> Never rest, never stay in one place. 
No fate too long than lightning. But the chain, the chain I forged in life, aid by my own free will, link by link, yard by yard. Oh, must all ghosts carry such a chain? Those was as heavy as this years ago. Your chain is one I wish of no spirit. Jacob, if it is you, tell me not if this is true. Tell me this is all a dream. I only wish it were. I stopped being dead because of what there was in life. But you were in good business when you made a fortune. This is what I mean! This! Is that what you want? Oh, you are always a good friend to me, Jacob. You'll be haunted by three spirits. Oh, haunted? Is it my only hope? It is. I think I'd rather not. That's the first one tomorrow. When the clock strikes one. Oh, couldn't I take all three at once and get it over with? At the second, the following night at the same hour. In the third, the night after that at the last stroke of twelve. And for your own sake, Ebenezer, he, what they say, No more work tonight, Ebenezer, my boy. It's Christmas Eve. I want the floor swept and the room sparkling. Your task <coughs> is to change this humble house into a lady doll. Oh, you've never seen anybody work so fast. The books, cash boxes, ledgers cleared away as though they never existed. <coughs> floor swept, <coughs> lamp trimmed, cold, beautiful as a bulb. Well, well. Where is that girl? Hey, Mr. Fuzzywig. Yeah. I see you remember her. Holly, mistletoe, jump to it, the both of you. Mrs. Fuzzywig, Mrs. Fuzzywig, all is ready for your entrance. <laughs> Oh, then everyone came in, the housemaid, the cook, the baker, the milkman, the milkman's brother, the boy from over the way, the girl from next door. In they all came, tumbling and scurrying and tumbling over each other. Ebenezer! Woo! I wouldn't be surprised if we saw soon hear news of an engagement among our employees, Mr. Fezziwick. And a fine couple that'll make Mrs. Fezziwick. A fine couple indeed. Chirp, chirp, music, music, let's have music, it's time for the dance! Sometimes it's not 
Something I can always bring to people. But do the ghost of Christmas present have those warnings up possible for you? I wish it was so. <laughs> What's that? A hand more like a claw? A child too? They're so thin, so shriveled. Where are they from? They are poverty and hunger. Are they yours? They belong to us all! Oh, they're so thin, so shriveled. Where are their parents? Drowned in floods, died of disease, killed in war! Oh, this is intolerable. They must have medicine, a hospital, a roof over their heads. Oh, there are no prisons, no workhouses! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Have a Merry Christmas, Mom. Have a Merry Christmas on that given you in many a year. I'm going to raise your salary and assist your family in every single way I can. I beg your pardon? I will discuss the matter of a glass of wine later, but first make up the fire, Bob Cratchit. I intend to make some change around here. I'm going to make this place hey, the happiest place to work in the entire city. <laughs> So, Scrooge does it all. Uh, and more. Much, much more. And a tiny Tim who does not die. Scrooge becomes a second father. As good a man as any you'll find. Some laughter to see him from change. He takes no notice. But his heart sinks, that's all that matters to him. It's said that if any man alive knows the meaning of Christmas, he's ever needs a Scrooge. And speed the day the same can be said for us all. God bless us, everyone. God bless.